We want to welcome you in the trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics. We are talking about the 2023 NFL schedule. We are going to cover it in big detail. But I want to thank First Star Logistics for providing outstanding studios and everything that First Star Logistics does. It is top shelf. It's real motivating to be associated with somebody like First Star Logistics as a company. There's no question about it. I want you to hit the like button. Also, we want you to subscribe to the channel. Get involved. Be part of this. All right. We're talking schedule. Got preseason schedule for you. Got regular season schedule for you. But how about some thoughts and opinions about the schedule? The Bengals. They've got four nationally televised games as of right now, but there's a couple of games that are still to be determined in terms of when they're going to play, what net network is going to televise it, what time, what day, all that. They have two Monday night games. They have the Los Angeles Rams at home, and they have the Jacksonville Jaguars on the road. They have a Sunday night game against the Buffalo Bills at home. They have a Thursday night game against the Baltimore Ravens away. They have a Saturday afternoon game against the Pittsburgh Steelers away. Really, they have four piggyback doubleheader games, whether the second game of that piggyback situation, which is a massive regional audience, almost like a nationally broadcast game. They have four of those games. All four of them are on the road. <laughs> Amazingly, every single late afternoon game that they play in this schedule, they're all on the road. And we'll get into them on a specific week by week basis. Um, they've never got more than two consecutive home games or two consecutive road games, which I think is interesting because in the past they've had three straight on the road, three straight at home. None of that this year. Three of the first five games are on the road. Three of the last five games are at home. The Bengals have the least amount of travel miles in the National Football League in terms of their schedule. It's because they're in the Midwest. They don't have to go coast to coast in any particular period of time. And they've only got two West Coast trips. Um, they go to Arizona and they go to San Francisco. That's it. Other than that, very, very, in the second half of the season, travel is not going to be an issue whatsoever. I mean, they're going to be well rested in terms of when they get off the plane and get to the hotel, that's not going to be a that's not going to be a, a, a big big factor. Talking about the division schedule a little bit, they open and close the season with the Cleveland Browns, which is very interesting. Opener on the road against the Cleveland Browns, the final game of the season at home at Paycor against the Cleveland Browns. They open the season with two division games. They closed the season with two division games in three weeks. So it's very interesting. When they play the Baltimore Ravens on September 17th, they don't have another division game for two months. They don't play another division game till November 16th at Baltimore on a Thursday night game. Interesting. Four of the last eight games are against division opponents. They do that for tiebreaker scenarios, determining playoff scenarios, seedings. For those last eight games or division games, two at home, two on the road. They have the back-to-back -back division games to open the season. They have back-to-back -back division games in November when they play Baltimore on the road, November 16th, and then Pittsburgh at home on November 26th. And then they have two division games in the last three weeks of the season, like I said. So the division schedule is kind of interesting. They're lumped together, but they're spaced out a little bit during the course of the season. That's just some of the things that uh, that I noticed about the schedule. Let's get into it. Preseason. Their opponents are the Green Bay Packers at home. They go on the road to play the Atlanta Falcons and the Washington Commanders. And there are no dates, times. That, that's, that's all still fluid for the preseason. But let's get into the meat of the 2023 schedule, which is the regular season. They open up on the road at Cleveland. We talked about it, 1 o'clock. Deshaun Watson. 
Highest paid quarterback in terms of guaranteed money in the National Football League still. Will Deshaun Watson make a stride in terms of what he's getting done with the Cleveland Browns? I can tell you for a fact, as a former player, opening on the road in Cleveland isn't easy. Isn't easy. It's the Battle of Ohio, part one, and it's happening right away. It's happening in the first game of the season. Things are going to have to be ready. Going to have to be ready to go. Remember last year at home against the Pittsburgh Steelers, five turnovers, no takeaways, five giveaways, go minus five and lose a game to the Pittsburgh Steelers that shouldn't have lost early in the season. Don't want to do that to the Cleveland Browns, against the Cleveland Browns. You want to go up there, take care of business, start off with a division uh, win, be 1-0 and in the division, then come back home on the 17th of September. You have the Baltimore Ravens in Cincinnati. Lamar Jackson, obviously, is a Baltimore Raven for a good period of time. He is a talented athlete. Deshaun Watson can hurt you with his feet as well as his throwing arm. Nobody can hurt you with his feet more than Lamar Jackson as well as his throwing arm. So you've got dual threat quarterbacks right off the bat, back-to-back division rivals, one on the road, one at home. The game on September 17th is 1 o'clock. Uh, both of the first two games are, are televised by CBS. So the third game of the season, September 25th, against the Los Angeles Rams, Matthew Stafford on Monday Night Football, 8:15 kickoff, ESPN coverage. This one's interesting to me, an interesting choice for Monday Night Football. I know they both played in, in the Super Bowl two years ago. Uh, the Rams are kind of in a little bit of a rebuild. Matthew Stafford. Last year, obviously, battled some some injury issues. Uh, but this guy can still play play the quarterback position. There's no question about it. And this is a, a quarterback-driven league, and the AFC is loaded with quarterbacks, as we've talked about. I mean, over half of the AFC has quarterbacks that, if they have good years, could be in the Pro Bowl. I mean, it's, and Matthew Stafford has been in the Pro Bowl multiple times, has been a Super Bowl winner, obviously an outstanding quarterback. So they have the Los Angeles Rams on September 25th. That is the month of September. Now we head into October. After playing the Rams on a Monday night football game, at least it's in Cincinnati, short week, you have to go on the road October 1st against the Tennessee Titans. Ryan Tannehill will probably be quarterbacking, although, you know, at that point in time, will it be Will Levis? Who knows? I mean, they get quarterbacks that are going to be battling a little bit during the course of the season down there. Will they let Levis sit for a whole year? Will they want to play him early? It all depends on what, how Tannehill's playing. But uh, going to Tennessee is no easy chore at all either. That fan base is rabid. There's no question about it. Uh, they've got a very, very uh, uh, physical mindset as a football team. Their head coach, Mike Vrabel was as physical a football player as there's been in the National Football League, and that's the way he wants his teams to play. They have a very good defensive line, very physical defense overall, and they want to run the football. They have a monster, Eric Henry, at the running back position to run the football. Tough challenge at Tennessee. Then the following week, October 8th, go to Arizona. Will Kyler Murray be able to play? That's at 4.05. That's one of the uh, piggyback doubleheader games, that's on Fox. The Tennessee game is on Fox. Monday night game is obviously on ESPN. Tennessee game on Fox. Arizona game on Fox as well. Colt McCoy, will he be the quarterback? Will Kyler Murray be the quarterback? Arizona's in a little bit of a rebuilding uh, scenario there, but you play Monday night football, short week travel to Tennessee, and then you have to take one of your longest road trips of the year to Arizona. They make two, two West Coast trips. Arizona is significant, and they got to go to San Francisco. Other than those two big road trips, their travel, as we talked about earlier, is pretty doggone handleable. There's no question about that. On the 15th of October, Seattle Seahawks come to Cincinnati. Geno Smith at the helm at the quarterback position, a 1 o'clock kick, CBS. Seattle Seahawks transitioning a little bit as a football team. Um, the Bengals, after – 
back-to-back road trips, Tennessee and Arizona. It'll be good to get back to Paycor Stadium and, and get a, a, a team under their belt at home, take advantage of it. I know the Bengals are anticipating unbelievable crowd support this year, and I know that's the way it's going to be. Paycor Stadium is going to be a tough place for people to come visit, try to pull out a win. And then the Bengals go on a bye week. Week seven is the bye week, pretty early. It's earlier than it's been for the Cincinnati Bengals here the past uh, the past few seasons. So six weeks, they take a bye. Then you have an 11-week stretch where you're playing some serious football. And this, to me, after the bye week is where the rubber meets the road a little bit. You got to go to San Francisco. I know, okay, who's the quarterback? Will it be Brock Purdy by then? Could be. Sam Darnold, Trey Lance? Don't know. They've got multiple candidates at that quarterback position, but they've got a talented football team. Their overall roster is about as good as there is in the National Football League. They can run the football. They play salty defense, and it's, that's going to be a tough challenge. Traveling out to San Francisco on October 29th, 425, uh, start there on CBS. Again, that's the second game of a piggyback doubleheader for the second week. Uh, of the of the season, Arizona and San Francisco. When you travel to the West Coast, that's normally the way it goes. The following game, big matchup, November fifth, Buffalo Bills at eight twenty on Sunday Night Football on NBC. Josh Allen at the quarterback position. Of course, everybody's going to be remembering the the Monday Night game last year, Demar Hamlin. It was going to be a Monday Night Football game. Buck and Aikman going to be calling it. And DeMar Hamlin has that, uh, has that tragedy in the early stages of the football game. The, the game is postponed uh, and then ultimately canceled. Now, <laughs> instead of Monday night, it's Sunday night. Sunday night football. Joe Burrow, Josh Allen, Buffalo Bills, Cincinnati Bengals. They've had some stirring battles. There's no question about it. And this one is, a, is going to be a big primetime battle. All right, so Sunday night football. The following week on November 12th, the Houston Texans. C.J. Stroud, young quarterback. There's some young quarterbacks in the AFC South. That's the division the Bengals are playing this season. C.J. Stroud will be at the, at the helm. Will Anderson, people think the best pass rusher uh, at, in the rookie class in the National Football League in a lot of people's estimation. C.J. Stroud, the first pick of the draft. Will Anderson, the second pick of the draft. Bengals play them at 1 o'clock on Sunday on CBS. So that's short week. You got a short week. Buffalo Bills, Sunday night. Schedules off a little bit. You got the Houston Texans. And then you go and you play a really short week. Houston Texans on Sunday. On November 16th, after playing the Texans on the on the 12th of November, on the 16th, you have the Baltimore Ravens at Baltimore on Thursday night football at 8.15 on Prime Video. That's tough. That's tough. You're going a short week right there. Division opponent, fortunately. So now you know pretty much what they like to do. You have their personnel pretty well set. Hopefully you have no significant injuries from the week before because that Thursday night uh, short week battle is is tough, particularly when you have to go on the road after you know during the course of a short week instead of staying home. So that one's going to be a, a very, very significant test for the Cincinnati Bengals with Lamar Jackson again and the wide receiver core that he's got. That defense is always very, very talented and very, very physical in the AFC North. Big te- division test right there. The, the following week, November 26th against the Pittsburgh Steelers and Kenny Pickett at the quarterback position, one o'clock kick on, uh, on CBS back to back division games. Once again, uh, now in this case, it'll, you'll have a long week. You'll have time to lick your wounds. If there are any against the Baltimore Ravens and get ready for the Pittsburgh Steelers, you'll have plenty of time to get that done. December 4th, getting into the month of December, go to Jacksonville Monday night football. 815 kick on ESPN. Trevor Lawrence at the quarterback position. <laughs> They've got a talented football team as well. Uh, a lot of people are projecting them to be a playoff contender for sure. 
There's no question about that. They feel like they've got a coach uh, that is uh, heading them in the right direction, and they feel good about their franchise, about their organization. That That's uh, another nationally televised game. So in, the, in, in a month's period, five games from November 5th to December 4th, you have the Buffalo Bills on Sunday night football, the Baltimore Ravens on Thursday night football, the Jacksonville Jaguars on Monday night football, all in a five-week stretch on November 5th, Sunday night football, on November 16th, Thursday night football, and December 4th, ESPN, Monday night football. That is going to be, like I said, the second half of the schedule after that bye week, the rubber meets the road big time. You've got these nationally televised games. You have the San Francisco 49ers to boot in that mix out there in San Francisco. It's going to be a very, very critical part of the season right after the Bengals' bye week. There is no doubt about it. December 10th, Indianapolis. you got to figure Anthony Richardson will be playing quarterback at that point in time. And this guy is a freak. I mean, his size, speed, strength ratio for quarterback position is almost unparalleled. I mean, he might be – I don't think he's quite as big as Cam Newton, but he might – he's faster. Um, he, he's, he's a very unique talent. There's no question about it. Anthony Richardson, the Indianapolis Colts, 1 o'clock kick on CBS in Cincinnati. Following week, it has not been determined yet um, the actual date of the Minnesota Vikings game. So the actual date of the game, the, the network and the kickoff time, all of that is still to be determined. Kirk Cousins, obviously, is uh, will be pulling the trigger for the Minnesota Vikings at the quarterback position. Well-established. Minnesota in Cincinnati, big game in the middle of uh, the month of December. On the 23rd, Saturday football, go to Pittsburgh for a 4.30 kickoff on NBC against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Mike Tomlin, rematch, Kenny Pickett for the second time. It's going to be a critical football game down the stretch. Will the Pittsburgh Steelers be in the playoff hunt? A lot of people think they, they could very well be. This could have playoff implications. I think that maybe that's the reason the Minnesota game has not been determined yet exactly when that game is going to take place because it could end up being another nationally televised game, potentially depending on how both teams are playing. On the 31st of December, New Year's Day, got to go to Kansas City. Joe Burrow, Patrick Mahomes. There have been some stirring battles here. The Cincinnati Bengals uh, have the edge over the Kansas City Chiefs. Kansas City did win last year's game, but Joe Burrow had won three prior to that. So Patrick Mahomes and doing his magic in Kansas City for the Kansas City Chiefs, 425 kickoff there on CBS. So that's going to be the second game of a, of a doubleheader, a piggyback doubleheader. The Bengals would be the, 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 basically the big game. The big regional markets all over the country would be picking up the, the Chiefs-Bengals game. There's no doubt, it, no doubt about it. And then the final game of the season to be determined the exact date, Cleveland Browns, it's to be determined when and, and uh, what network and what time opening kick and all that sort of thing is. Deshaun Watson for the second time against the Cincinnati Bengals, another division game. It'll be interesting to see, uh, again, the entire league. It, it's the last week of the season. They pretty, leave, they pretty much leave it in a flexible situation. They want to see who is making the final drive to make the playoffs. Which games are the most important? Which games are the best matchup? Networks will be, uh, you know, having a big, big say on on when this game is played and um, exactly the the day, the time, and the network and all that sort of thing. So that's the 2023 schedule for the Cincinnati Bengals. Um, like I said, I think the, the toughest part of the schedule is right after that bye week. Six weeks, the Bengals hit the bye. I, I think they should be in pretty good shape. They should have a pretty good record in those first six games. They have to they have to get off to a faster start than they did last year. They're going to have to make sure that whatever they did last year during the preseason, and I'm not saying more preseason snaps necessarily, 
they're going to have to get a little bit sharper than they were to start the season last year. Uh, they, they started off you know, with, with two losses. They were 0-3 in the division last year and had to come back and win three straight division games in the second half of the season. Um, so they, you, don't, you don't want to be in that situation. You don't want to lose to Cleveland and Baltimore and be 0-2 uh, to start your season off and be 0-2 in the division to boot. So you got to really gear up. To the, the most important game of the season right now is going up to Cleveland and playing well up there against the Cleveland Browns. Get a division win on the road. Road division wins are humongous. No two ways about it. So we'll see what uh, what what unfolds. Again, see if there's anything else that I wanted to talk about that I that I have not at this point in time. I think I've got everything pretty much covered that I had a chance to take a look at the, uh, at the schedule as it came out here. I do think from October 29th right till the end of the season, that, that 11 game stretch is going to be a big one for the Cincinnati Bengals. I mean, that it's, it's, it's a grind. It is a grind. That's they're making a, they're making one of their two big West coast trips to, to play the 49ers. Um, They've got nationally televised games, like I talked about, in a five-week period, three nationally televised games. So you're playing different games of the week. You're playing Sunday night. You're playing Thursday night. You're playing Monday night. I mean, it, it just gets your routine uh, just out of whack a little bit. You, you're going to have to handle and deal all that sort of thing. But that's what comes with success. I thought the Bengals might even have – at least one more nationally televised game. Although when you look at it, they have two Monday night games. They have a Sunday night game. They have a Thursday night game. They have a Saturday game. And then again, four games that are second games with double header. All those four are on the road. Saturday game is on the road. The Thursday game is on the road. The Sunday game is home. The two Monday night games are one on the road and one at home. So a lot of their um, high profile games they're going to be regionally or nationally televised. Are going to be road. They're going to be road warriors in those games. So people want to see the Cincinnati Bengals. They've earned that right. Now they have to sustain that level of performance. As the old saying goes, "There's no seat at the top of the ladder of success." You know, you climb that ladder one rung at a time. There's no seat up there. Everybody's trying to knock you off. Everybody's trying to get a piece of you. So. Sustaining that level of excellence and doing it over and over and over again is what separates the true champions. Dave Lapham at Four Star Logistics bringing you another team to watch. Is that Dave Lapham? These group of brokers really know how to win. Just look at the stats they're putting up. Highest commissions in the industry. Amazing perks for their employees. And I've never seen anything like their training program. No wonder their growth has been so explosive. If you're hungry and driven, this is the team to join Peter. Dave, who are you talking to?